do you see America losing her footing, her grip on the Middle East because of this hypocrisy, this blatant hypocrisy and imperial hubris that is being shown to the um, Muslim world, to the Middle Eastern and North African region over this Palestinian conflict? I think it is. I think it is losing its footing. I mean, you already see that in that it is starting to lose Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia was the United States, one of the United States' most important proxies, along with Israel. It was what the United States used to prevent uh, national liberation movements uh, in the Middle East, uh, Baathism and other national social uh, uh, movements. This was the kind of bulwark against that. And it was also the basis of the U.S. petrodollar, which allows the United States to have this unlimited credit card that it spends because the U.S. dollar is based on it being the reserve currency, which is tied to its being the peg for the petrodollar. And the fact that Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, slipping out of its orbit and where Saudi Arabia goes, the other Gulf states go. And you see the Gulf states are building relations with China and the Belt and Road and the BRICS. Then you see that there is a kind of foundational centrifugal force that's happening. And the U.S. is no longer able to uh, exert its will in this arbitrary and unitary way uh, uh, as, it, you, as it was able to. But the problem with this is that this is a very, very dangerous moment because as the empire weakens, as it senses its power waning and slipping away from its grasp, it becomes more dangerous. Uh, to give you an analogy, it's like the drunk at the bar and the bar is closing. You know, the final call has been given, the bar is closing and the drunk is drunk with power. It's drunk with power but it has uh, maxed out its credit cards, okay? And it struck out with everybody and it's time to go home. It's time for the empire to go home, but doesn't wanna go home. The drunk doesn't wanna go home. And what it wants is it wants a fight. It wants to have a fight. Uh, it would, uh, you know, it's gonna have a fight. Uh, it's not gonna go home. It just wants to pick a fight. And if it has to take on the entire bar, it will. And that's kind of the mindset of the neocon dead enders who believed that it was their mandate starting the 90s to rule the planet. They refer to it as unipolar global hegemony. That's just a fancy word for boss of the world. They believed that they were the boss of the world and they believed that they should and could do anything in order to do that, and nobody could have a say. In fact, one of the neocons said, it's our job to pick up a small country and throw it against the wall every few years just to show who's boss. This is what they said. You know, They said, we create our own reality. The rest of you can study it. We make our own reality. That was the kind of hubris and arrogance that fueled this imperial project, this neocon imperial project. And now this power is waning and they're becoming frantic. And so they want to take on the world. One war in the Ukraine is not enough. A second war, a genocide in the Middle East is not enough. They want a third war, right? Uh, two wars and a genocide are not enough. Now they want to also go to war with China. And I assure you, uh, there is no way that that can, uh, have any chance of, of being successful. But this is their hubris, this is how they think. And they would rather see the end of the planet than the end of their power, because mm -hmm. the end of their power is the end of, their, end of the world for them. They'd rather see the end of the world than the end of their imperial privilege and power. And that's why this moment is so dangerous.